Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today I have for you another Armored Warfare replay. This is Operation Phalanx on PV Hardcore. I have Grim Mike in the VBL and myself in the Soviet T-80U. Well, I guess technically Russian, but we won't split hairs as it was originally a Soviet design. Take a quick look over the vehicle here. Show this off a little bit. Got the uh, actual Russian Arctic camouflage on the vehicle. Looks pretty sharp. And we'll talk a bit about the T-80U. And I'm mostly going to primarily focus on talking about the T-80U for this video. Although I'm going to talk a little bit about the original T-80 as well. Black Company. This refinery is a valuable Listen to that engine spool up. That's that gas turbine engine. The T-80 is a third generation main battle tank designed by the Soviet Union. The T-80 would enter service in 1976 and was the first main battle tank to in the world to feature a multi-fuel turbine engine. The T-80U was the last model of the T-80 produced at the factory in Omsk, Russia, while the T-80UD and the T-84 would be further developments to be produced by the Ukraine. The development of the T-80 would begin in 1967, and it would run until 1975. The T-80 was originally designed to replace the T-64. However, this wouldn't happen due to a number of factors, including fuel consumption, cost, and reliability issues with the turbine engine. Now, a lot of these teething problems would go away over its time and upgrades in service. However, the big one that really would never go away is the massive fuel consumption of the Soviet turbine, sorry, Russian turbine engines. The T-80 would enter service in 1980, and so far 5,575 T-80s would be produced. It is still in service today in a number of countries. The T-80U weighs in at 46 tons and is made of a welded steel construction for the hull and a cast composite construction for the turret. Now in game though, if you check the uh, armor, uh, the armor calculator, the armor preview system, it only shows the armor as steel. Uh, I'm not sure why, especially considering that the T tier six T-80B as shows steel quartz construction which makes a composite type armor. And I'm gonna get into some theories here in a bit of the problem with its armor pattern. The T-80U's engine has been upgraded to a GTD 1250 turbine engine that produces 1250 horsepower. The original T-80 only had a 1000 horsepower engine. This gives the T, uh, T-80U a power weight ratio of 27.2 horsepower per ton. Makes a very, very maneuverable vehicle. The T-80U is armed with a 125 millimeter to a 46 dash two smooth bore cannon with a coaxial PKT 7.62 millimeter machine gun and a pintle mounted 12.7 NSVT machine gun for anti-air purposes. The T-80 has seen service in a number of countries. China, Cyprus, Egypt, Pakistan, Russia, South Korea, just to name a few of the countries. We also know Czechoslovakia and Ukraine uses the T-80 as well as some other countries. Now this tank, the T-80 itself, has not seen a ton of service um, over its years, or well, a ton of combat service, active combat service, especially when compared to like the T-72, 
which even though it's the elder of the T80, it's actually not a much older vehicle, but it was also a more mass produced vehicle and more shared vehicle compared to the T80. It's actually only recently, uh, if I recall the mid eighties is when you first start seeing export customers for the T80 itself. So it was in service for, for about 10 years before we start to see active service in other countries. Uh, that being said, also, uh, even though it's still in service in Russia, they're actually slowly replacing their T-80 fleet with other vehicles such as the T-90 and even the, the few vehicles that they have in service, uh, or sorry, that other countries have in service, they've been slowly replacing the turbine engines with diesel engines. Uh, so there seems to be not really a whole lot of love for the turbine engine in this vehicle. However, what that turbine engine allows is a vehicle with a good, very excellent power to weight ratio and allows the vehicle to have a very good top speed. And it gives actually, surprisingly, the T80 actually has a very smooth ride, making it one of the better Russian designed vehicles for fire on the move capabilities. Um, Another thing I haven't pointed out with its smoothbore gun is, is it can fire ATGMs just like all the other uh, Soviet smoothbore guns in the game. Well, maybe not all of them, but most of the 125 millimeter smoothbore guns can fire ATGMs as well as tank munitions. Now for this vehicle, all I have is uh, tank munitions covering a combination of heat and Sabo ammunition. Now, generally speaking, uh, the T-80, I feel, in Armored Warfare is a good vehicle. However, there's a caveat to that. If you're not bothered by the idea of a main battle tank that does not have uh, reliable armor, to me, this vehicle kind of meets in the middle between a light tank and a main battle tank. Armor is a little bit more reliable than a light tank but it's definitely less reliable than your typical main battle tanks of this tier or even tiers around it. And the, I think that problem actually has to do with how the game currently calculates the T-80's armor of being steel construction and actually not having any of the composite. There's also gaps. If you look at the front of the T-80, I'll, I'll show you a quick front view here. There's also gaps, especially around the headlights and around the turret and in some other locations on the front of the explosive reactive armor. Now the rubberized, uh, I'll point these out too, the rubberized flaps, there's that flap there covering the lower glacius and the extended flap on the sides towards the rear, that is supposed to give heat protection to those areas, or it's supposed to add protection versus heat rounds uh, to those areas. Uh, while that stuff does actually work pretty good against light shaped munition charges, such as what you get with like an RPG or an AT4, it's actually not that effective against a tank round. Identify. So there we go. There's there's the end of the replay. So let me pull up the stats here. Now the T-80 is a tier seven main battle tank. So throw that out there. I've, did, I've had a couple, quite a few good games in it. And as you can see here, I've had a good game in this. But once again, its armor is not very reliable. So keep that in mind. It's, it's, eh, it's actually considering most tanks of the tier, it's pretty damn unreliable in general. Uh, the only thing that could be possibly worse than this is the M62000, which has like a tier three, tier four hull armor compared to this being a tier seven. But anyway, folks, let's cover the results here. We got 17,471 damage. I spotted 16 enemy vehicles and destroyed seven. Grabbed myself a blue star. 
And I would be top damage overall as well as top spotting damage overall. Not bad considering that there's a tier 8 Merkava here that should have easily outdone me for damage. But apparently he just couldn't keep up with the big dogs. And then, of course, you got the Griffin who once again just could not keep up with me. I don't know. I got lucky, I guess. But anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this Armored Warfare replay. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully I will see you again for the next video.